Let us rise for the reading of this morning's sermon text recorded for us in Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful thought songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. Glorious and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our only source of hope and comfort. Amen. Dear followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, growing up, I had an old single aunt, okay, that typical old single aunt who left the area where all of the family was, she went to New York City and worked as a telephone operator, made a lot of money, <clears throat> had five husbands in her life, but by the time I was a teenager, she was single once again. And for every major holiday, she would send all of her nieces and nephews, quite a few of them, a card. And it always had a bill in it. $5 bill, $10 bill, $20 bill. And it was interesting when I would come home from college, because we all got together to see what everybody else got at Thanksgiving. And up, what did Grace give you? And... One year, I didn't get a card. So I went home thinking, nobody else got a card. But everybody else had a card, except for me. So being young and a little bit foolish and brash, I went up to her and I said, and Grace, I didn't get a card. And she said, Oh, that's right, because the mail doesn't work at your college. Because last year I sent you a card with some money in it, and you never thanked me. So I'm just assuming that there's a bad delivery system there that I can't trust anymore. She was also pretty clever. But it's interesting when we think about saying thanks, about thank you notes. Because sometimes it is just an acknowledgement that the gift came through, that the intended receiver got the gift that the sender wanted them to have. And I think that's an important reminder for us on this day of Thanksgiving. Because we have all come here, just as the psalmist said, come to the house of the Lord. We have entered his gates with praise, with hearts that are thankful for all the wonderful things that God has given to us, all the wonderful things that God has done for us. But God wants us to remind him that we understand it, that we've gotten it that we know that he is our Lord, that he is the one who created us, he is the one who has made us, and he is the one who has brought us to himself, to made, he has made us to be his very own children. The most wonderful and greatest gift that we could ever receive. And sometimes I think we get blinded by all of the things that are around us. All of the things that we can hold in our hand, all of the things that we have stuffed in drawers and in closets and in storage bins and up in the attic stuff. 
We have stuff. But are we content? Are we happy just with ourselves? It's a rather interesting concept, I think, for us as the modern church in America. To be able to stand in an empty room, and let's maybe put a mirror in there, and to look at ourselves and say, this is who I am, and I am happy. I am content, because my loving God created this by his power, by his grace, by his love. He made this. And in an age and a time when it is so easy for us to say and find all of the itty bitty little things we don't like that we could so easily change with just a little bit of money. A little nip, a little tuck, a little color, a little filler, and we can be exactly what we want to be. But will we be content? Contentment comes from knowing that it is God who loves us. He made us. He created us. Just like this glorious world in which we live. By the power of his word from nothing, he said, let there be light. And it was there. And he continued to speak and to create. For six 24-hour days, this wonderful and marvelous world that still fascinates us that still has us thinking and looking for new things and trying to explain the things that are before us and how they work and why they work the way that they do. It's a great world that he created. That same powerful, almighty God brought together our parents at the time he wanted them to be at the place that he wanted them to be. And he gave them a gift. He gave them us. That he is the one who created us. He is the one who knit us together in our mother's womb. He is the one who took some very basic elements, a couple of ears, a couple of eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and put them together in a very interesting way. So that I'm unique, and you're unique. His own wonderful creation. And what a tremendous gift that is that he has given to us the miraculous ways our bodies work, the things that go on just because we're living and we have an active mind that causes our bodies to breathe without us telling it to breathe, skin that lets sweat out but keeps the blood in, marvelous things. But yet he has created us at the time he wanted us to live for his goal and his purpose to be his child. And we should never lose sight of that blessing. We should never lose sight of the fact that it is our God, our Heavenly Father, who has made us who we are. And we come to him with our unique perspective to thank him and praise him for this body that is ours. That yes, changes with time, changes with age, comes along with all of its aches and pains and its all own uniqueness. I always think of that at the store or anywhere where there are short people and shelves because they come up to me and they say, sir, can you get that thing up there? 
And then they say, oh, if just for one day I could be tall. And then I turn to them and say, if just for one day I could be short. <laughs> and save myself the headache of banging into things. Well, I'm thinking in my head, and stop all of you people from coming up to ask me to get the toilet paper on the top shelf. It's so easy for us to get sidetracked by the things that are us. But we come back to the fact that God has made us in a beautiful way. His creation. And of all the blessings we have, I think we remind ourselves today that we come to Him to praise Him for those wonderful things that make us who we are. Because we also know that without Him, and having made us, we wouldn't have experienced his greatest love for us in the fact that he has made us his own. Because in the blessing of creating us and putting us into history when he wanted us to be, he has also presented us somewhere along the line in our life with the message of his gospel. Maybe from a mother or father maybe from a teacher, maybe from a neighbor, that someone shared with us that message that that God who created everything and created us loves us and sent his son to die for us, to be our savior, to be the one who saves us from the clutches of Satan and the perils of hell, to bring it to his eternal home, where we enter as his sons and daughters to sit at that ba great banquet feast in heaven to enjoy his blessings for all eternity. And it's Jesus himself who said to those people that he had just fed miraculously with a few loaves of bread and a couple of small fish. They came after him, following him, wanted to know how he got across the sea. And he said to them, you come because you had your full. You were satisfied. I have greater things for you. And they wanted to know, how can we do the work you want us to do? And Jesus turns to him, to them that are gathered there, with the simplest of gospel messages. Believe in the one that God has sent Believe in Jesus Christ. Your sins have been forgiven. He has made you his brother and his sister, children of God through the power of his resurrection and his death on the cross of Calvary. And now that we are gods, that makes us different. It makes us mindful of everything that we have. In our Old Testament lesson, Moses was speaking to God's people who had traipsed through the wilderness for 40 years. Dry, parched land, snakes, scorpions. And he said, you're going into the land that they described as a land flowing with milk and honey. So many blessings, so many great things are going to be at your disposal. But it was important for Moses to remind those people, when you have eaten and had your fill, remember the Lord. Because all of those blessings can so easily put into your head the thought that it is by my power and my ability that I have made what I made. This is my castle. I have done it all. And I've filled it with everything that I wanted. And Moses said, be careful. Because all of that stuff can take you away from your Lord. Not being grateful. Not being thankful. But always be mindful the fact that it is God that gave you the ability to work. 
It is God who provided that job. It is God who has given you the wherewithal to save and to purchase and to do that in a financially sound way. We thank him for that. Because we are his. He has purchased us with his blood to love, to serve, to thank, and obey according to Luther's command, uh, Luther's catechism. Such a beautiful reminder to us today of why we're here. Why we're here with so many blessings, but not to overlook any of them. We can spend days and hours thinking of all the things that are ours, <coughs> and that's the point. Because Thanksgiving isn't just about today. It is about all our days. It's about the life we live because God created and breathed into us life. He washed over us with Christ's blood and he has given us eternal life. And as we live as God's children here on this earth or hereafter in eternity, we do it the same way, filled with hearts that are grateful, lips that are filled with thanks and praise for all that God has done, all that he has given. But we never forget to let him know we got it. Thank you.